we are here today to tell your fedora story. Now, the session name might not be super obvious, so I am going to... Hi, Justin. We'll see you soon. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the idea behind this session and what we're doing for the Fedora Week of Diversity. So the Fedora Week of Diversity is a transformation of Fedora Women's Day. I think it's about a four or five year long running uh, event that we've done. And, um, you know, women uh, was a first very obvious place to focus our DNI efforts. Um, as we have you know, not very many women or non very binary folks in tech, um, there's a lot more men in this industry. So it seemed like an obvious first place, but as we've grown as a culture, uh, a community, um, and society overall, especially with the things that we've learned in the last two years, um, uh, we've decided to move this event to the Fedora Week of Diversity. So this is to be uh, even further inclusive. And we're not not celebrating women. We're still celebrating women um, and all of the other uh, uh, intersections of diversity that Fedora has. So that's what Fedora Week of Diversity is. Um, Yona, Vipul, and I are leading up an effort to make this happen. And uh, the concept behind the Fedora Week, of Fedora, uh, Fedora Week of Diversity is telling Fedora stories. So um, we're not trying to um, display some sort of ingenuous, disingenuous um, kind of display of what we want Fedora diversity to be or what we think it should be. Um, instead, we're looking to um, the community to say, hey, we want to hear your Fedora story. And those are the stories that are meaningful to folks that uh, they're probably going to be the types of things that bound you to Fedora, like your identity as a Fedoran. Um, so the idea behind this is um, I don't know if Grayson is going to join us. Uh, he was supposed to be here, but it's Saturday morning, so maybe not. I see him in the people section there. So he's okay. here. Hi, Grayson. Yeah. So we're also um, partnering with the podcast. Hey, Grayson. Thanks for joining us. Hey, so I was here. I didn't know if you wanted me in here yet. I want you. Yes, come on. So anyway, so we're partnering with the Fedora podcast to record some content here today. So we thought this would be a great chance to uh, catch a bunch of Fedorans uh, all at once and be able to converse with you about your Fedora story. So how it's going to work is Grayson has set up a recording room for us. Meanwhile, we will just chat and ex you know explain to newcomers who are coming in what uh, we're doing here. Meanwhile, we also can record and happen this is being recorded right now so if we have some chat or conversation in here we can use that as well so we can have like two places we're basically telling stories and doing recordings um so we have some prompts um if i don't know if anyone has that hack md up the ball or yona i can look for it uh, real quick i'm having some pipe wire issues so i'm gonna reboot and be fast as i'll be back as fast as possible Sounds good. So, right. So we have two different spaces. So we're going to have prompts for people. So questions. So I'll just get the pumps primed here. So this is, uh, like I mentioned, uh, we want to hear a story about your Fedora experience. So for example, who is your Fedora mentor and what have you learned from them? Um, what was your aha or transformative moment um, like to, to solidify you as a Fedora contributor. Um, what was the most fun you've had um, contributing to Fedora or being a part of the Fedora community? Um, so these types of questions. So um, as folks um, are feeling comfortable to uh, tell their Fedora story, we're gonna invite them up onto the screen um, and then once they're done, they're going to 
leave the screen and you're going to have somebody else come up. And the reason for this is the more um, people we have up on the screen, the smaller and smaller our video, <laughs> our faces get on the recording. So, and also we wanna give people that chance to tell their story without a lot of interruptions. So um, we, when Grayson comes back, we'll get a volunteer to join him in his recording room and I'm sure he will drop a link for us. For now, what we can do is um, have somebody come up and talk to us about their fedora story. Paul would like to tell his fedora story. Okay, let's do that. Oh, you actually, I don't see you on the moderation panel. I accept it. Okay, cool. Hello, uh, am I ready? You are. Hi, Paul, how uh, are you today? Yeah, good, hello, I am uh, Paul Flaherty. I have autism and ADHD. I am, I have been using Linux ever since uh, 2015. I've uh, discovered Linux, uh, somebody told me, um, my father told me that Linux is this OS for computer geeks, me being very curious in the Linux operating system. I just uh, started exploring and I have an old image of me on an Ubuntu live CD. Um, I was using Ubuntu 14.04, that's how I started. Then I discovered Fedora. Um, I discovered Fedora and I was like, wow, this is cool. I can get this, it looks like RHEL and it has all the new GNOME features, GNOME features. And just to wanna to get the GNOME community to, uh, I'm gonna say it proper, GNOME. So, um, you know, the GNU network option sing environment. So <laughs> um, I am just, uh, I, I was, um, I just discovered during the pandemic, uh, my uh, summer camp program closed down. So I was thinking there was nothing to do. So I thought, oh, I could contribute to Fedora and GNOME. And I went to conferences and I go to Linux conventions and now I'm running Linux on my machine that can't run Linux. I'm also running Fedora on my laptop. So, and, awesome. and then I went to Guadec and I met, uh, Ricard and Andy, who are really great, and I'm so happy to input advice. And uh, Fedora, it, it's a great project to work with. Uh, you guys, I, 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 I like you guys. You're very inclusive. You help assist people. You uh, value freedom and free software. You're kind of, you're uh, as value, you have that value as much as Debian does, which is pretty interesting for a corporate sponsored distro. And I'm so happy that you guys are, I'm so happy that you guys actually embraced freedom, which is good because I know that where the OS I used to use, I'm not naming it, uh, had a lot of um, uh, spying problems, you know, Windows. <laughs> right. Can I ask you something, Paul? Yes. What's your favorite Fedora moment so far? <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you were laughing during the, uh, uh, you are uh, not, not laughing. I was being, uh, I was at the uh, conference, uh, the uh, the cake thing, and I was yeah. talking to the people about um, Red Hat and RHEL, and I was laughing because they were like, uh, there was Debian, and then there was a, uh, they were talking about how Red Hat was just so hard to manage back in the day. And not Red Hat was so hard, but not, not Red Hat. Oh, not Red Hat. Uh, Debian was so hard to manage, so people used Red Hat. Ah, and then, and then so that was your core. favorite moment. Yeah, so I just am wondering, so how did you, um, so I'm so happy that the community is very excited to uh, bring people on. I'm, I'm looking someday, maybe after I go to college, to, uh, to actually work for Red Hat. Cool, that's an awesome goal. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Paul, for coming up and telling your story. Yeah, um, so I'll let somebody else uh, join the screen. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, next we have a card. Hi, Ricard, are you there with us? I can't hear the sound. Is it me? I can I hear, hear it as well. Yeah, still no sound, Ricard. Sorry. Maybe try refreshing. Uh, Marie, you are muted. Just realized that. 
Uh, while we wait for Ricard to come back, um, is there anyone else who is interested in telling their fedora story? This, um, Paul, so what we're going to do with this content is we're going to edit it into a series for Fedora Week of Diversity. So it will be published throughout the week of diversity, and that's uh, the second week of October, I believe. And you'll see things on YouTube, and you'll see things on the community blog, and a couple other places. No. Same issue. Is it a pipe wire issue? <laughs> Still nothing from the card. Yeah, they just mentioned they'll try from a different computer. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yay, technology. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a test your audio video session under the sessions tab if you need to try to figure all that out. All yeah. right, so I'm going to ask Vipple then. Vipple, who was your Fedora mentor? And tell us one story about uh, working with them. So in 2000, early 2016, I had a broken foot and I made this person work in Fedora QA. We all know him, Sumantro. And he introduced me to do things around Fedora QA. And I, he said, oh, come in the meeting tonight on IRC and I'll introduce you to Adam Williamson. And I was so excited. Oh, yes, it'll be great. And then the way I was introduced and the welcome, I, I just loved it. After that, I started doing a bunch of things in QA. Then I met Yona. Uh, in Flock, that was fun. Uh, she was doing a lot of things around mentored project, and she was doing outreachy and Federal Summer of uh, Google Summer of Code things, where we were talking about happiness packet, if I remember correctly, dressed in. Right. So that was also fun, and obviously, oh, so many. I'm I'm just trying to think. I have have been I have so many mentors throughout the time, but yeah, Sumantra was the original one. I'll say that. And still is, we talk uh, a lot of the times and we discuss how things are going on infrastructure side, QA side, how we can work together. A bunch I have of a things. question. Now yeah. that like you've been involved in Fedora for so long and you're on CPE, like, do you see, still see Sumantro as your mentor? I always consider him as one. Uh, he was the one to introduce me to Fedora and I knew of Linux. I had used a little bit, but the day I met him, I ended up uninstalling operating system that I had at that time and installed Fedora directly jumped in it. And after that, he taught me a bunch of things. So yes, definitely. I do consider him my mentor even now. Cool. I'm going to ask Yona, if you feel comfortable, would you like to tell us about your Fedora mentor and one thing about them or a story of, of yeah. how they helped you? Yeah, sure. So uh, for me, it was Yanis. Uh, He's um, part of the uh, Fedora Greek community. He's not active now, but at that time he was very active. And actually, I saw him at Oscar, the first um, conference that we did in Tirana. He gave a talk about Fedora. And um, I remember that after his talk, I went at the Fedora booth. Uh, so I took a DVD. So he convinced me to you know, install Fedora on my computer. And since then, I kept contacts uh, with him, uh, him and also Ardian from the uh, Fedora community in Kosovo. Uh, they were like very helpful and um, they helped me to become an ambassador and so on. Um, and I, yeah, I, I really enjoyed um, learning about Fedora from both of them. And um, favorite moments? Well, usually I would say especially Flock. Um, and my first one was in Krakow, in Poland. And it was really great that, you know, the people that you work through the whole year, finally you are meeting them in person. And it was like really, really great. So you, especially when it's the time for Flog that we can uh, meet each other in person or now, you know, online. <laughs> uh, it, it's really great. Uh, we have so many great memories and 
uh, that's why, yeah, my favorite thing in Fedora, it's um, the community, the people. And what about- I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little, a little feels. <laughs> Especially when uh, yeah. you meet people and hug them. It's yes. one of the things that I miss a lot. <laughs> yes. Um, my mentor. So my mentor is Mo Duffy. People know Mo as Ms. Mo online or Duffy, I think too. Um, so Mo is the Fedora design team leader. And I was connected to Mo through an outreach internship uh, in 2013, working on Fedora badges. Um, since then, Mo has encouraged me and supported me like literally every step of the way. Mo wrote me the recommendation for the Fedora Community Action and Impact Coordinator position. And when I read the letter that she wrote me, I literally cried. Um, that, I, I don't want to say that's my favorite moment with my mentor, but um, it just showed how much Mo was ready to support um, other women in this industry, which is super important and an inspiration to me and part of why I now mentor for Outreachy, right? I realize the impact that it had on me and my career and my life, um, not just my career, confidence, right? There's like attributes that I've learned from being a part of Fedora that uh, affect and improve my life across the board. So Mo is just instrumental in my entire Fedora story. <laughs> and now I get to work with her on like a weekly basis, basically, um, on something or another. Um, I'm gonna say my favorite or my, the moment that I think of a lot or often is I was going to, um, it was a design fad. So a fad is a Fedora activity day for the folks in uh, the, the audience that don't know what a fad is. Um, so I was at a design fad and I was talking to Mo about badges, right? So I had started doing the internship and I was like still maintaining it and doing work there. And it'd been like maybe a year or so of like continued engagement after my internship. So I'm asking her like, hey, I want to do this thing with badges or I want to make this decision about badges. And she just looked at me and said, you run badges. <laughs> why are you asking me about making this decision, right? It's one of the most powerful moments for me with Mo was her empowering me to, to, to lead in that way, right? And getting the signal from my mentor to lead something was huge for me at the time. Uh, it was a huge boost in my confidence and my, uh, you know, even my f Fedora identity, right? Like being a leader uh, in this, even for a sub project. Um, was was pretty impactful for me. Okay, Ricard, I see that you're ready. Please come up and join us. Except that's it. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? Yep, we can. Yeah, hear good, you. good, 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 good. No, no, it's it's the thing. I I I've, ne I've, I've never been able to solve this problem. It, it, it was the same problem in Guadic too. That uh, I, I don't know why my Firefox browser and my Ubuntu won't share the audio. But anyway, I rebooted to Windows, so it's all right. Uh, well, the, the, this thing with with diversity and inclusion is is always difficult. I started using uh, Linux in the late nineties. Uh, the I had a friend. In, 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 a, in a class and we we bought we bought like a CD set and then we burned it and I think that he was a little bit more tech sa savvy than what I, I was and and uh, I think he went with Slackware and I went with Red Hat Th then to to and and at that time I was not part of, of the Linux community though in 2001 and 2002 I was unemployed so then i i had as a hobby to build a small linux cluster using i used pvm and then then i was like on a beowulf mailing list i won't say if i if that was to be a part of the linux community or not but 
uh, that, that I did. And then let's fo forward on to the, the, the present or, or where my neurodiversity story starts. Uh, I was in a school where, where let's say, I won't name the school, but let's just say that these students had a problem with people being different and also teachers not to their liking. And it happened to neurotypical teachers also that if they didn't like a person, they would go and complain. And that was when I hit the wall. And then I started to think about, is it good to disclose a diagnosis or not? And it has caused me, this was roughly six years ago, and it has caused me both pros and cons. But, but that's when my, to the present, when my neurodiversity journey or thoughts to be open or not in a diagnosis was considered. And then I have had many problems with Swedish authorities in the year 2017 and on. So that was also a thing. But then I started to thinking about IT and, and it's a great good thing. Actually, SAP, in, in, it's a German software company that does business systems. They had a neurodiversity program as early as 2015, no, 2014. But then there's a the problem that uh, uh, they only look for top, top programmers. And, and I'm not the top programmer. I, I would be able to teach a high school class or a basic college level class on how to program Java 101 or C 101 or, or things like that. But, and that's also what's one of the other reasons I hit the wall that I'm not very good at web programming. So for me, I think accommodations of, of like a cognitive kind to have work that I, that I can do and perhaps a slower working pace or working less hours than full time are good accommodations. And some people might need no accommodations on the spectrum. So all people are different. And in the EU, in Sweden, the employer, the Swedish public employment office can pay an employer for accommodations. I know that, are, that there are such systems also in other European countries. But uh, that is something, and there's something also called the Euro European Social Fund, where one can seek money for such a things like accommodation. But then I, I won't, I don't know what's the US and what's the Czech and so on. But uh, and and to, to finish off my talk, then the, and then I wrote this article on on neurodiversity, and and, and I'm happy to to for the reception. And and I'm, I'm I'm and I also think it's e this thing with um, accessibility that I've also talked with Paul. And if other other community members of the Linux community want to contribute to the work of making Linux more accessible, that would also be interesting for to me and other neurodiverse people. So th thanks for letting me join. I have, I have a follow-up. Yeah, yeah sure, 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 sure. So what has your experience so far in the Fedora community been like uh, in regards to some of the issues and topics that you were talking about? No, I, I think it's been good. And I, I also really like that that is welcoming and that you invite people and, and that you and that the other session was, was also good. And, and I, I also had it was, also, it was announced that we talked in Guadix. So that my experience has been very good. Awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. So, so, <laughs> well, so, so, thank so you for, for coming up. Bye bye. bye, yeah, bye. Bye. Um, you know, I missed a totally crucial part of this, which is there is a Fedora badge to earn. Um, if you come up and tell your Fedora story, um, really it's for anyone who's involved in organizing or being part of the Fedora Week of Diversity at all. It's not specific to Nest. Um, so please, uh, if badges motivate you, <laughs> um, join us. Zippo, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying to all those folks who have already been here, can you please share your uh, fast ID in directly in my message section there, or you can on the chat if you're comfortable, and I'll award you guys right away. So Grayson is on screen. I wonder if you would be willing to tell us a little bit about your Fedora mentor and uh, how that experience has been for you, and do you have like a favorite 
memory or aha moment working with your mentor? Um, well, I never really like followed the, the correct path, I guess, for how to get into Fedora. I kind of just made it up. Uh, if I had picking someone who kind of mentored me into Fedora, that would definitely be Neil Gompa. Gompa. He, um, I was, he actually was the one who originally convinced me to use Fedora and then slowly dragged me into contributing. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Nick Bebout was also really helpful. He got me into Fedora badges. Um, so I got into Fedora badges, started helping with pushing that, pushing those badges, doing the sysadmin end of things, and just kind of looking around. And then I, um, I knew that I didn't really want to do programming that has never really interested me. And yeah. And so I found the Fedora marketing team, which at that point was semi defunct. It was pretty much just Edward and reached out to him. And we talked about, well, what, what needs to be done? There's a massive pile of things that need to be done. And he gave me this list of like different areas in Fedora where marketing is needed. And I decided to reject all of them <laughs> and asked about, so what's the status on that podcast? And he was like, well, I'm working on it, but you know, it's, it's a lot of work for one guy. So I um, started helping out with that and did that. But yeah, that's very fedora. Like, yeah, all those things are nice, but I have an idea and I'm going to do it. <laughs> I have something I want to do that I think will be beneficial for it or cool um okay yeah. so, so I've, I've never really oh, had one person it's kind of just been i ask everyone all the questions yeah we chat about stuff all the time grayson so yeah. um unfortunately i have to exit the session um Vipple and yona are going to continue on without me i'm in so many different sessions that it was kind of impossible not to have some things overlap, especially with time zones things, because most folks want it in the morning for me. So um, thank you, you for everybody. Me. Yes, thank you for everybody who came. Sorry, I have to dip out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, someone says, we need to find a way to fork Marie for conferences. I would second <laughs> that. All right. Yes. Thanks, ever Thanks again. I'm sure Marie could use help of another Marie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. So, so does someone else wants to jump and share the Fedora story? Also, Ricard, can you please share your fast ID so that I can award you the badge? And Linz is here. So hello, I don't want to steal the stage because I think I'm in almost every imaginable way a person who belongs to the majority of something neurotypical. I'm white, I'm male, I'm relatively old. I'm a developer, so for open source uh, free software projects, like this is where the majority is, right? Um, what what I like about uh, about participating in Fedora very much is to uh, come into contact with and collaborate with people who are not like myself, which is very valuable to me to also sometimes get get out of the comfort zone um, um, to like to try to understand so someone someone else situation or point of view and also appreciate that um, like we've been doing this for for, for a long time but uh, in 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 the early fedora days it was it was really something to uh, that I had to wrap around my uh, head about if that makes sense um, that not just developers can contribute to this. This is so valuable, like um, design team, outreaching, that, that stuff. That's not something that comes naturally to me, 
but other other folks do that and this is so uh, uh, like any any piece of that that's missing federer would be less for it right so i think this sums up in some way my my federer story just give us one second neil let me pull something out we have been we have a script that we try to do and we did it in last in person vlog as well and it created a very beautiful video so do you see this in chat i'll pin this okay um then let's go back to hi my name is niels i'm from uh from germany from the southwest part of it i am what i am i i'm i'm a developer by trade um been doing that for well 20 plus years now so i use the predecessors of fedora red hat linux back to i think red hat linux 4.0 sometime around the late 1990s so uh, i'm old folk and i speak um german which is my mother language i speak english fluently i speak french and italian a bit and um let's not get into programming languages we also want to make kind of like a um a co uh, like a collage of people saying i am fedora i didn't see that see um yeah okay shall, shall we do it again i mean i'm going to bore you guys <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's make a joke hi my name is niels i'm from germany i'm a developer and i speak german and english for the most part i am fedora Thank you. And Nils, if you can share your fast ID in the chat or in direct message, I'll be awarding you I that. I will. Yeah, and we have thing after this. So Luna, if you can start sharing your audio and video, we can accept you. So should we start with the script part or do you want? Yeah, let's yeah. start with your story first, Luna, and then we can, in yeah. the end, we can wrap up this script. All right. No, no. Yeah, my story is I translate a lot of open source and been doing that for a couple of years. And then in the GNOME Damn Lights, the translation system that GNOME uses, there is a free desktop, other projects link. And there I found the translate.fedoraproject.org site with the Fedora web late. So I signed up there about one and a half year ago and started helping out a bit. And then at Nest last year, I started helping about a bit with the QA testing as well. And, and there I got officially a Fedora contributor, so I've been that for about a year now. Mm, that's about that, I think. And my name is Luna Jernberg. I'm from Sweden, and I'm a localizer and a tester, and I speak Svenska, that's Swedish in Swedish. And I am Fedora, and I identify as non-binary. Thank you. No problem. You know, do you think the script is okay? And then we can start back, get back to the session. Yeah, I think that it's great. So there you wanted to share your story, right? Are you interested in that now? 
And uh, Ricard, just one thing I'm trying to avoid with the BAS, but you have not logged into BAS.FedoraProject.org. You need to do that before I can award you a BAS, which means you have to create an account there using your FAST ID. Hello. 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 I'm from India. I am a heterosexual woman and I speak Hindi, English, and I'd like to believe I can speak some French as well. Um, and I am Fedora. So, um, I'm actually, I think, a pretty fresh contributor. Like, uh, I'm currently an outreach intern. And uh, I'm working with the design team. My project is creating designs for the community outreach revamp. So I think I'm probably one of the like freshest contributors here. And I got involved with Fedora through Outreach. And for me, it's been like an amazing experience so far. Uh, I got to speak to a lot to a lot of people. I got involved with a lot of people like uh, like being like for example uh seeing something that i've made be shared or uh, be uh, created like um, like if something like swag is uh, actually printed out and created i feel like that is an amazing feeling something that i hadn't really uh, experienced before so it's been amazing my mentor is marie and she's obviously been a very strong supporter supportive figure like i really look up to my mentor and uh, like it's just been an amazing experience for me um i think this conference would probably go down as like one of my best memories because uh, i think uh, one of the things is that uh, like uh, i got to work on the museum map and like it was really nice seeing so many people on there and so many people sharing it and speaking about it so that felt amazing and apart from that i got to uh, speak and present like i got to talk and that felt really good as well um, so women in tech like in india uh, sometimes it's uh, there's a lot of uh, this feeling like you're in uh, i think it's called imposter syndrome so you can get a lot of that so i gained a lot of uh, confidence by contributing to open source and i'll definitely be con like continuing after my internship period is over that's about me Thank you for sharing and welcome. You're not new, relatively. It's I have no I have known you for a while, and thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your story, and yeah, just share your fast ID in the chat there, and I'll right. award you the badge. So, who else wants to join? I see we have many people around, so we would love to hear some more stories. Yes. Sure, you can join. Yeah. To join, just click on share audio video on your right hand side of the screen where you see us. And I'll let you in. There you go. Uh, Didik, can you give that a try again? I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing the wrong, wrong name. There you go. Uh, so, uh, good. Oh. so my English is not that great. So, pardon me if I make mistake. So my name is Didik. I'm from Indonesia. I'm a man and I speak Indonesian and English. So I am Fedora. Uh, it's been a year ago since I contribute to Fedora, but I think I started to engage with Fedora people when I found some bugs in docsfp.io eh, and fixed it in Pagure, you know, like correcting some strings and etc. So simple, right? Uh, and then which brings me to this point. I started to, to create a package back then. So it was just a simple bash script that I make myself. So I'm asking about packaging that to Fedora join, 
I can renew back then, so I was helped by Angkur Sinha, uh, and now he is my sponsor and my mentor to learn more about packaging. Also, it ends up only at Fedora Copper, but I'm still really glad for the help. I started my journey to learn more about Floss since then. I thought, uh, also, it already one year from that point. Uh, I'm a packager now, so I don't know what's my favorite things with my mentor, but I'd say the experience of working with him through IRC network is good so far. Mm, so that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you very much. Dada. You can also leave uh, in the chat your uh, face ID so we can uh, award you the badge. All right. Uh, good point, Nils. Yeah. yeah. When we say FAST is Fedora account system and FAST ID, we mean your username that you use in Fedora for almost everything. Hi. Hey. Can you see and hear me? Yes, we can. Hey. Nice to see you. Yeah. That's a great format. So I'll, I'll do the intro. Um, hi, my name is Marina. My pronouns are she and her. I am from Cambridge, Massachusetts in the United States. I work on diversity, equity, and inclusion in free and open source software, and I'm a co-organizer of Outreachy. I speak Russian and English. I'm Fedora. And um, yeah, I've been using Fedora for 15 years, ever since I joined Red Hat. And uh, I worked uh, on GNOME desktop as a developer. Uh, then um, I was involved with, um, I started organizing uh, GNOME Outreach Forum for Women that became Outreachy. And I got involved with diversity, equity, and inclusion in free and open source software. I've attended many flocks. I was like happy to see, um, yeah, one of my happiest moment was today when I logged in into Fedora badges and saw that I have 27 Fedora badges. Um, I love that project and I'm motivated by badges. This is why I'm doing this intro. Uh, I'll, I'll have to let Marie know. <laughs> and oh, yay, 20, my badge, exactly. And yeah, and I also um, worked with Brian Axelbeard in the early days of um, preparing the new code of conduct. And I was so happy to see uh, Marine, uh, Marie. Uh, brings us um, over the finish line. Yep. Thank you so much. You have done a lot. Oh my God. Which was the first Fedora version you came around? I think 15 years so core. It was still had core in the name, I guess. Probably. Yeah. Like, no, I've, I, I don't remember what Fedora <laughs> version it was that I started with. That's, that's quite a long time. Thanks a lot. Yeah. And great work with Outreachy as well. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, just share your fast ID so that I can make it 28. I'll, I'll we'll move do. It to that. Um, just a quick update. I have made a poll in this session about um, how welcoming have you found the Fedora community? And I'd be interested in what the results are from that. So if you want to, you can go into the polls tab and answer that. And just I'm going to say something extra. If the answer has been anything other than very. And if you have any ideas on how we can fix or improve the uh, experience, I would be more than happy to just talk in private or how, whatever your medium of conversation you want to be that. So uh, do reach out to us. Be Diona, me, Grayson, or Murray would be even better person for this. And we would love to make it more a, a better scenario. Hey, hey. can you hear me? Okay, so my audio wasn't available, so I wasn't sure. Um, my story, uh, I, I'll do the tagline first or I'll forget. Um, hi, my name is Bradley Davis, uh, pronouns he and him. I am from the United States. Uh, I am a man and I speak English. I am Fedora. Um, my story, I think, is kind of like Grayson's. Like, I don't know, I don't have an official mentor. Uh, I started Linux in probably mid 2000s. I always ran into snag, something I needed, always kind of fall back to the evil windows. 
Um, in about 2017, um, I was in a job where I could listen to podcasts. I uh, found Destination Linux, um, and, <laughs> and that was where, you know, I to watch that show evolve. And um, they always kept, you know, you should give back. You should give back. And I'm like, well, I'm not a developer, you know. And then they'd always encourage. There's other ways to give back. And uh, I was in a Telegram group last year, and someone invited me to nest just in a generic invite and i'm like oh what's this kind of clicked on it and i started down the rabbit trail of becoming fedora and getting involved and part of the reason why i never gave back is i was a distro hopper i was trying to find the next thing or, or, or whatever and um and since i've installed fedora i've been running fedora for a year um probably the most known person i've connected with in the fedora community is uh like grayson said neil gompa um him and Michael Tunnell and I have been in several long conversations after uh, like Twill or, or Destination Linux, um, but they've been really encouraged me to engage. And um, I do really enjoy, like uh, everyone has said, it's very inclusive. You don't feel like because you're not a developer, you don't understand something like, you know, you get to go read the manual or there's, there's none of that. It's like everybody seems to be very welcoming, want to help and, and very encouraging. So that's my story. Thank you. Thank you for sharing it. Thanks. And as usual, your fast ID in the chat would be really helpful for me. Hello. Hey. hey. Hi. Hey. Hi, my name is Jens. Um, I'm in Singapore. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Um, I speak several languages, but uh, English, uh, Danish, Japanese. Um, I'm a developer, um, and I'm Fedora. Yeah, um, I've been yeah. So I've worked for Red Hat, and I've been involved in Fedora since the beginning, I guess. And uh, mostly, my main work is on internationalization. So. Yeah, and I'm also involved in the workstation and high school packaging and other things. So, yeah, it's really great to be here. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, you do great things everywhere. So, as I said, I'm sure so many people will be inspired and mentored by you. Pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for this. Yona and Grayson, till someone clicks join, do you want to do the script? I can if you want. Yeah, you sure, can start yeah. first. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Grayson. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm from the United States. I am a Fedora contributor who works on the Fedora podcast and I speak English. I am Fedora. People, uh, do you want to do it next? Sure. Uh, oh, let us Jocelyn come here. Yes. She, she's see. our intern and, and she's been doing Hi. amazing work. Hey. Hi. Um, before I start, I'm going to start first with the script. Um, hi, my name is Jocelyn Perdomo. My pronouns are she, him, hers. Uh, I am from Caracas, Venezuela. Uh, I am a developer. I speak in Spanish and English. I am Fedora. Okay, uh, to share my story. Uh, I just like Dahira, Dahira, I am a freshman who started from outreach program this summer. Uh, I am working in uh in automate automatic uh, the uh, community uh, contributory metrics project uh, alongside with uh, matthew miller um yeah he he was my mentor during my internship it he was great for me um yeah <laughs> my english is not very good sorry <laughs> i'm looking for a uh, go af uh, after my internship i would like to jo uh, continue as a developer contributor uh, i am really interested in the website uh, and apps uh, group i would like to join more often to the <laughs> to the meetings um yeah 
this is pretty much my story. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Uh, Jan, would you like to go next? Sure. Hi, my name is Jan. Pronouns are he and him. I am from Finland. And I speak English and Finnish and Swedish and some other languages. I am Fedora. I've been working with web team and I've been translating Fedora. And I've done programming and other stuff as well and documenting. You may have seen me around. Who was the first person you met when you came to Fedora, Jan? Mm. With Matt, you know what I mean, IRC. IRC. Yeah, I remember, I remember seeing Matthew or maybe it was Ben. Ah, I see. <laughs> I probably both talked uh, with Ben about the uh, documentation. I didn't like it or yes. I didn't find what I was looking for. So. Thank you for sharing your story. And yeah, if anyone else wants to join, feel free to request to share your audio and video and we'll accept you here. Right. Uh, hi, my name is Pascal. Uh, pronouns are he and him. I'm from Indonesia. Uh, I can speak English and Indonesian, of course. Uh, and I am Fedora. Okay, so. My story with Fedora um, starts in, I can say it's not starting from Fedora exactly. I started, uh, or I can say I restarted my Linux journey uh, in 2020 when the pandemic hits and I need reliability with my hardware. So, um, uh, the one certain proprietary operating, operating system that I ran uh, was crashing my GPU and yeah, it, yeah, kernel panic happened on that operating system. So I went to CentOS um, because I saw it uh, like it's stable and it's based on RHEL. Uh, and I know RHEL is very stable uh, and yeah. I used CentOS for a while. I um, like I installed many stuff on it, and as you may expect, uh, over time, I turned the system into a Frankenstein uh, because you know, uh, like a lot of stuff in there are obs like quote unquote obsolete. So. I had to like compile stuff and you know I even like compiled Pipewire 0.3 from Rawhide to CentOS to try like oh, oh it's fun uh, I'm just going to do RPM build and yeah it it works uh, yeah I, I did make to I didn't manage to get Pipewire 0.3 with the audio and video sharing on CentOS 8. That's, yeah, that, like, I did experiment a lot with CentOS and, um, like, as a desktop user, uh, like, not intended maybe, uh, as, like, as many people use CentOS for, uh, like, for servers and for the enterprise workstations or for enterprise VMs, I used it for desktop and experimentation. I experimented it a lot. I hijacked it with, uh, if you know it, Bedrock Linux. It's uh, a one meta distribution that allows you to mix and match packages from other distributions. And yeah, um, at the end of the day, system D breaks and I had to install the 32 bit version of system D to make my system boot again. So yeah. Like, 
I managed to break system D on that system. So uh, like I caved in and I realized I need to use something that updates often. So, so yeah, I went to Fedora in February 2021 uh, and I've been loving it ever since. I started with Fedora 33 workstation with GNOME and uh, I jumped to the, the 34 beta and yeah, now, now with Fedora 34 and looking forward to use the free future versions of Fedora. Um, and my involvement in Fedora, well, I can say I'm not uh, really, I'm not, I'm just uh, an outsider. I'm, I observe from the outside. Uh, I manage some copper packages. Uh, if you happen to know uh, some kernels, uh, like kernel sandmod, I, I, I used it on my previous Ubuntu install, and I think, oh, this should be ported into Fedora. So <laughs> I started a copper repository. I set it up uh, like with integrations and stuff, and I built it. And I built all the variants of it. I built the like six variants, and yeah, it's Fedora is a really good uh, like. As a whole, uh, Fedora, it's a really good learning experience, uh, and it's not just the distro; it's it's the community too. Uh, I'm 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 somewhat active in the Fedora Linux Discord. Uh, I assist people, and yeah, they are very friendly. Uh, yeah, there are some laughs too. There are some discussions. That's you know, Fedora as a community is great. And other than that, I really love Fedora for its openness and transparency because the infrastructure on Fedora is openly big and you can see everything like Koji builds, Bodhi, uh, or like others like the sources and everything. Yeah, it's it's been really great to be inside the Fedora community uh, a bit. I don't really i'm not a contributor of the project yeah i've been really loving it and that's my story thanks and sorry for making it too long perhaps i think we don't have more time now um but i want to thanks everyone for joining us and feel free to join us uh for the federal week of diversity uh, we will have also um, an article very soon posted so you can uh, share more stories that we can um, share with uh, the rest of the community. Uh, we will follow up um, later on after Nest. So thanks everyone and see you in October. <laughs> bye. Um, yeah. yeah, bye. This is also going to be a video soon. I'm going to start working on that probably a week or so after this is all done. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, who shared your story. And Thank again, you. if I did not award you the badge, find me, hunt me down. Uh, you can find me on IRC, Telegram, Central Places, Twitter, and I'll award you the badge. Thanks a lot, and have a good one. Enjoy the rest of the nest. <laughs>